cutting edge procedure makes it easier for scientists to manipulate the human genetic code. But some geneticists are saying the research has to stop before we change the course of humankind. Science reporter Alastair Wilkins explains. UNC researcher Dan Dickinson alters the genes of tiny worms to study how DNA guides the development of life. He uses a technique called CRISPR. All you have to do is give it this short little piece of DNA that acts like sort of a molecular zip code to say, okay, go and cut here. CRISPR repairs the cut by inserting a new piece of DNA that alters the genetic code. Compared with previous gene editing methods, CRISPR is faster, cheaper, and easier. So much so that in fact anyone with the ability to manipulate human eggs, you know, any in vitro fertilization clinic in, in principle could do this technique. As far as we know, nobody has used CRISPR to edit the genetic code of human eggs or sperm, but any changes would be permanent. It doesn't just affect the individual whose genome was edited, it, it in principle would also affect all of their offspring. Researchers could use CRISPR to wipe out genetic diseases, but is it ethical to change the genetic code of people who haven't even been born? NC State genetics researcher Chase Beisel says treating disease could lead to changing other traits. Say eye color or intelligence or overall athletic ability. And so it's a slippery slope to go from human therapeutics to what you could call designer babies. UNC researcher Dickinson says scientists should tread carefully before messing with the human genome. In the meantime, Dickinson says there's still plenty CRISPR can tell us about our DNA without the risk of changing our genetic code. In Chapel Hill, I'm Alistair Wilkins reporting. Scientists, including the inventors of CRISPR, published editorials last month calling for a halt to all research on editing the genes of human eggs and sperm until the scientific community can consider the ethical and practical issues.